The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Toku Talk. Hello. <laughs> Battle France. <laughs> anyway, this three, this three, I'll do that. Um... We're talking about the evolution of Kamen Rider villains. Yes. From the past to the present. Maybe the future. Yeah, it's true. Now, I will just go on back and start from the beginning. Sentai and Rider really started out with the same type of villain mm -hmm. faction. Let's just have an organization. And with a curly Q evil mustache. <laughs> evil. <laughs> Yeah, is there it, is, it is evil with that ex with that elongated e because they are just a nebulous group of bad guys who want to but they have like take a, over the world, a destroy area things, to do or from. So They've got a base of operations yeah. that but we keep cutting limits? back to. They are limited. <laughs> but yeah, it's just you know that's what they always end up going back to. We're all in this one area. We're mm -hmm. all working together, usually under somebody. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom, yep, it's it's like that. Yeah, every, we we cut back it, to the, it, it was that era, we though. cut back to the headquarters, and the villains are all like stomping around and being like, "Oh, curse that, the curse that common rider! What shall we do to destroy him? I know, I'll send a monster out. This has never gone wrong before." I just want one guy in the background going, "Maybe next time you brainwash him before we give him superpowers." <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> it's the meme of the guy being thrown out the window. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. then, I guess around, what would be a good breaking point for that? I guess, not so much go to Captain Movies because they're their own special thing. Mm -hmm. But around Kuga, they were just like, let's not. <laughs> let's, uh. I feel like it was before. Would you say Kuga is where they start to get a little more. Nebulous? No, I was going to say get a little more extreme with their acts of villainy. A little bit. That was going to be, uh, I think it was Agito. Where they were just putting people in trees. But Kuga was the one with the kids. <laughs> yeah, we're just like we're just gonna have like the monsters go out and do their own thing. Yeah, it was less of an organized thing and more of just mm -hmm. chaos. And although they did have like that one lady mm -hmm. who was sort of the control of the uh, portion of the Grongi, uh, for portion of the show before uh, mm -hmm. our technical secondary, uh, and Kuka got rid of her. And then of course you had uh, and Zagabadeva coming at the end mm -hmm. and just start. I'm gonna kill. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Everyone, sir? But Everybody. <laughs> but at the same time, it, Kuga wasn't just about the good guy fighting the bad guys. It was also this whole thing about the good guy understanding the powers he's been given and the consequences of said powers, especially when he got his upgraded writer kick and he killed Well, yeah, people. but we're not talking about him. We're talking I know. About but, <laughs> but no, what I'm saying is that that was also the beginning of villains aren't just the things you're fighting. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Because Zagaba did sort of represent how far Kuga could go mm -hmm. in the opposite direction. Yeah. What he could have been. But I do appreciate the fact that we really got a... What's what I'm looking for? A delinearization of how the villain factions work. Yeah. Where it's not just one person at the top and everybody at the bottom. We don't have a chain of command so much as we do... <laughs> Monsters. I mean, yeah, we would eventually go back to that. We switch back and forth. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Like any evolution of tokusatsu over the years, this is kind of a roller coaster. And this yeah. is what I think, one of the things that really, I think, delineates uh, Rider from Sentai is that Sentai, throughout its history, has always been a villainous organization for the most part. It's always been like, we have a group, we have a chain of command, we are sending monsters out to... You know, go accomplish fight, some other to go goal. to go fight the heroes. Sometimes they change it up a little, but okay, you're being big and yes. uh, So sometimes they do change it up, but then you look at Ryder and you, you look at something like Ryuki, where it's just monsters and then each other and then and then each other. We talk about Ryuki. We can. You got to talk about evil riders. <laughs> yes, that's a thing. That's very new. Shadow Moon isn't an evil rider. He's mm -hmm. specifically not. A common writer. But then you have people like Ryuki where you got Oja and the alternatives and uh, uh well like half of the cast. Yeah, like half of the cast just end up being bad. Half people. of the cast are in a moral gray area. Yeah. 
Where, yeah. No, where, Oja's the extreme. I would say, I mean, Oja, yeah, he is an evil, evil man. But then you look at somebody like Zolda, who is not 100% on the side of Ryuki. He has his own goals. But he's not, but he's not an evil person. Especially because there was he's, always going to be the anticipation of, you're going to have to turn at each yeah. other at some point. <laughs> I, I would argue Knight falls into this category as well. There, yeah. are, there are many times throughout the show where he and Shinji, Shinji are, are buttonheads. They're at each other's throats. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, they do want to accomplish the same goal. Yeah. It's a shame we haven't had another writer like that. The evil writer thing is, you know, while new, it has... Stuck around. It sort of oversaturated itself in some places. It, depending on how it's presented. Um, yeah, because I mean... From what I understand, because I haven't caught up, Revice's evil writer seems to be doing well. That will change next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Because shenanigans. But you, you end up having ones like... Everything. <laughs> a lot of the evil writers end up being sort of constrained to movies in some cases. Yeah. You got G4 from... Uh, the Agito movie. You got the three from the Kabuto movie. Fires movie. Still, God, Paradise Lights is so good. Because you sort of get why the writers are the way that they are. Uh, and then you got some really I've also never, ones. he's the only person I've ever heard say Henshin with an English, with a, you know, Western accent. Oh, right, because I think the guy was from Taiwan. Yeah, and it didn't sound stupid and weedy. Good to see you guys. <laughs> I love you. It's it's just a it's a weird word for English. Yeah. It's, yeah. Because it is it henshin or henshin? It's a weird thing. But anyway. But depends on who says it or how they're told to say it. Yeah, that's true. I'm just saying it works somehow in that context. Mm. I will say though, with the evolution going on, even with that organization sort of somehow being there in some case, more often than not nowadays, they have really leaned into the. The evil writer is going to come out somewhere. Mm-hmm. You saw that happening either since like a uh, palette swap, like with Kabuto, mm-hmm. or with uh, Genma right. from X Aid. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some other good ones? Would you say Baron falls into this example? Uh, Baron was the secondary turned evil monster. It was less of an evil writer. Yeah, I think they sort of did that to sort of show the one ener- how far he fell. The energy writers might fall under that category because they were antagonists. Yeah, and then, you know, it just depends on the person at that point. Yeah, what's Sid. What the story is. Of getting it. it's, it's, it's short, he was there, but... I would was... say Dr. Ryoma. Yeah. yeah. They really like to play with ambiguity a lot. Moral yeah. ambiguity. Random tangent. Is it that I preferred his non-energy writer form over his energy writer? Over the movie? Yeah. Mainly just because you so rarely see a rapier as a weapon in shows like yeah, this. Yeah, also hated the thing on his head. That's fair, but still... <laughs> Get him with a ball. But yeah, it's just like eventually an evil writer. He was a lemon. He was a lemon. The evil never got his way. Never done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it really depends on where they want to go because I really sort of do feel like the evil writer is just going to be the thing now. What about the evil writer writers in Zero One? Because there were a couple. They weren't necessarily evil. It was mostly just arc at the end. Yeah, I would. Even though he had a redemption arc, I would still count. Was it Bowser? <laughs> what? Well, I mean, Bowser? Yeah. Yeah. He was a bastard man. He was a bastard man. Capitalism. Mm-hmm. His suit was cool though. Yeah, they did that twice. I can't wait until January comes. Gonna be a good month. But uh, I I'm not sure exactly which I prefer. They have done the monster thing where they're just like, well, let's have them stick around for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Saber did that, but. Uh, uh, if we're going to stay on the subject of evil writers, uh, what about Dan Kuroto? Ah, the bastard man, does, the bastard man. Does he fall into this category? Because I would say yes. Yeah, he also did. It changes throughout the course of the show. By the end of it, he's less he's less evil and more just insane. He was also <laughs> in a, the Thouser special that came out last year. Okay. So he because those two in a room together just... It, it it's w- comedy. I I haven't decided if we're going to be watching that for the uh, Zero One month, but that was full of shenanigans because you can't, you know, hold Dan Kuroto back. <laughs> no one out Kuroto is the Kuroto. He was just the supreme bastard man yet again. Mm-hmm. I will say, though, and I, 
I'm not exactly sure which one I prefer. Having the monsters at the beginning, and then like never using them again. Built. Mm-hmm. There's a terrible example of this, but they did it. Well, it's what they did because it became less about it completely shifted away from let's fight monsters and victim of the week stuff to a much grander scope and using common writers as as the stand-ins for a proxy war yeah between warring factions so i again i admire the ambition i just don't think it was executed well <laughs> many things that they should learn uh but it, it seems like they're all doing that x8 did it as well but they sort of still sprinkled in because they reuse the monsters but they did it for you know, a specific video game based reason. Mm-hmm. It's just, I do think the formula is getting a little stale. I think Zero One did it in a good way when it came to reusing monsters. Because mm-hmm. Dodo, they reused uh, Dodo oh, yeah. a lot, and it but it worked because it was always an evolution from the last yeah. one. Mm-hmm. And then we got the Dodo Writer. Um, I do think it becomes a little bit Dodo. Sorry. It has stale lies. I'm just going to make that a word now. Uh, Become stagnant? Yeah, it's it's stagnated a lot. There we go. Uh, in English! Some cases. Because more often than not, it seems like at the end, they'll just end up finding any, fighting an evil writer. Mm-hmm. It happened in Saber. It happened in Zero One. It happened Even in... Saber was like the beginning premise. Mm. Yeah. They actually didn't do it in Gio. Because he was just another writer. Well... Which is a monster in that show. It is, but also, at the same time, Zeo kind of did it. It was less about fighting an evil writer and l- more about not becoming one. There was still an evil writer, but not physically present. But it became it anyway. I'm just saying because the last person he actually fought in that show was another decade. I'm just saying. Of course it was. Honore Decado. Honore Decado. I do sort of just miss when they fought monsters uh, the entirety of the show. I mean... Because for a while there, it was one right after the other where we had W and then O's, uh, Forza, Wizard, where it was all, there, there, there is a group of bad guys, they are using human beings to create their monsters. Yeah. Using some, whether it's the switches or the metals or despair. Or the guy memories. Or the, the, uh, the guy memories. Drugs. Yes. That is what they were. You, you, as a, as a, as a metaphorical stand-in, Yes. But uh, you, using those, using some sort of creation of their own design that they can use to then turn humans into monsters, and then Kamen Rider fights them, and then, you know, whoa, there they are. They're the real threat. Standing behind them, laughing maniacally. I will say, Revive seems to be doing it a little bit differently this year. Yeah. Where it's just like, you have the organization who's actually going out and putting the stamps on people to make the monsters. Right. But you also end up having the other writers... That he's also fighting against with evil, um, and I'm guessing another one in the coming out of the woodwork soon because he's sort of getting sidelined for a little bit. But I think a mix like that works a little bit better, especially to mix up the formula. Speaking of mixing up the formula, we're going to talk about that Sentai trademark after this too. Um, it's, it's just interesting. It feels like it, it. Honestly, it feels like I would love to see this more in Sentai than I do in Kamen Rider, where it's. De- uh, delineated a bit. Well, more just like I want more Neji Rangers. We all do, but because um, <laughs> I literally just rewatched their like introductory scene from Mega Ranger. Oh, the week. terrifyingness! Kamen Rider likes to put its heroes up against dark reflections of themselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sentai, not so much. And honestly, what's the harm in flipping the script with each other for a bit? Well, we'll see what happens next year. Yeah. Um, but. I like the current it, the current villains of Common Rider. They're okay. They're a bit a little over dramatic, I guess. Oh, oh, oh. little saber. <laughs> I know that's not like saber levels, but I mean, one of them is a fucking matador or mariachi. How does that make you over dramatic? Oh, that's a costume yeah. design. But he also plays to the the over dramaticness of his costume design. That ball cut. That is also costume design, but... I still have one of those. I think everybody did at least. Every... I think most every, every white kid did at least once. Yeah, I didn't want to say <laughs> that, but... Because their mom was like, I'm not paying for a fucking barber. For me, that was the buzz cut. Yeah, buzz cuts are easy for me, and I still do them. My wife will not let me get a buzz cut. 
They say it's easier to take care of. But yeah, uh, I just, I don't know what I want to see, but I think Revice is going in a very different direction from things that we've seen before. Which could be a good or a bad thing. Yeah, I do like sort of not having an organization there all the time, but at the same time, they're the ones who more or less provide, one, something for the villains, uh, for the heroes to really fight against, mm. and two, a storyline. <laughs> see, I think Zero One did it the best. Because there was a villainous group, though it was less of an organization and more of just like this ragtag team of rebellion, rebellious machines. And it was also less about fighting evil and more about uh, fighting competing ideologies until Ark got introduced. Which is why I think once we end up getting to Zero One Month, that is going to be a fun one. Because there was Zero One is like, we can be friends with the machines. Mm -hmm. There was... Um, Matsubo Jindai, who was the machines are superior in every way, humans should fuck off and die. And then there was Vulcan, who was like, the machines are monsters and they need to fuck off and die. And Zero One's in the middle, like, come on! Can't and we all just get along? The thousands over there, like, they're just something to be used. Yeah, they are They are possessions. They are... And Valkyrie was just like, they're just machines, who cares? And then David Cage is off to the side going, ooh, I should write that down. But yeah, no, it was a it was a very good like idea and premise that was executed well, and then Park got introduced. But we'll get more into that in our review. That's all I have to say about that. But yeah, I think that's really all we can do about yep. this one today. Uh, Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Right the there. evolution of rider villains. Uh, if you have if you found us somehow and you haven't hit that subscribe button, go right ahead and hit the notification bell as well. We'd appreciate it. Oh God, that hurt to say. I'm one of those people now. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. You'd have a crisis.